In a separate video, we discussed the term rated speed, which is commonly used as an indicator of train performance. However, another frequently used term is the speed category. Both are indicators representing specific aspects of train performance. While detailed analysis requires examining acceleration force curves, something this channel has frequently highlighted, these simpler, easier to understand indicators are widely utilized. This time, we'll focus on the speed category as our theme, taking a look at the history of train performance improvements up to the end of the Japan National Railways era. The speed category is created by combining a speed symbol, which indicates the speed at which a train can ascend a straight section with a continuous 10 per mile gradient, with characters representing the type of train. The speed symbols consist of a combination of letters and numbers. For instance, 100 km per hour is represented by A, 90 km per hour by B, and 80 km per hour by C, assigned in alphabetical order in increments of 10 km per hour. For example, the speed symbol G4 indicates a balancing speed of 44 km per hour on a 10 per mile gradient. In sequence, 20 km per hour would normally be represented by I, but to avoid confusion with the NUMA 1, J was assigned instead. Train types are indicated by specific characters, limited express passenger trains use the character Toku, special, all station trains use T, stop, and trains with intermediate stops use Tsu, pass. Additionally, EMUs include the character Den, diesel-powered trains use Ki, and passenger car trains use Kyaku, passenger. For freight trains, the character Ka, freight, is used, and during the Mid-Showa era, freight trains were further subdivided into more detailed categories. During the era when two-axle freight cars were predominant, the addition of high-speed two-axle freight cars with improved bearing support mechanisms, as well as high-speed container trains consisting of bogey freight cars, introduced categories such as limited express and express for freight trains. Express freight trains operating at 75 km per hour were designated as Kuka, express freight, while limited express freight trains exceeding 85 km per hour were assigned the label Taka, special freight. In contrast, from the pre-war period to the mid-Showa era, such numerical categorization was not in place. Instead, Chinese characters like Ko, Atsu, Hei, Tai, Bo, Ki were used. According to regulations established in 1937, Showa 12, speeds were divided into three categories, high speed, Ko, medium speed, Atsu, and low speed, Hei. Train types were categorized as passenger, mixed, and freight, as mixed trains were common. Labels such as Tsukyaku Ko, a-Class Passenger Express, Tsukyaku Atsu, B-Class Passenger Express, Tsukyaku Hei, C-Class Passenger Express, Kongu Ko, A-Class Mixed Train, and Kongu Atsu, B-Class Mixed Train, were used. The balancing speed on a 10 per mile gradient, which serves as the standard for speed categories, underwent significant changes with advancements in vehicle performance. During the Taisho era, when the steam locomotive C-51 hauled a 420-ton limited express passenger train, it managed a speed of only 38 km per hour. In terms of modern speed symbols, this would be represented as H8. In the Showa era, with the advent of the C-53, it became possible to haul 550 tons at the same speed as its predecessor. When the C-62 was introduced, it could haul 660 tons at the same speed. For freight trains, during the Taisho era, when the steam locomotive 9600 hauled 600 tons, the balancing speed on a 10 per mile gradient was 21 km per hour. This improved to 33 km per hour with the introduction of the D-51 in the Showa era. The modernization of motive power in Japan National Railways after the war brought significant changes to the era when it was common for steam locomotives to struggle with maintaining speed on gradients. With electrification advancing, the mainline locomotives shifted to the EF-58 and EF-15. The EF-58 achieved a balancing speed of 60 km per hour E0, while hauling 700 tons, and for the standard long passenger car formations of the time, weighing 550 tons, it achieved a balancing speed of 74 km per hour D4, marking a leap in performance. An interesting phenomenon was observed during this period. Despite being an older model, the EF-58 demonstrated advantages over the newer EF-65 in certain situations. For example, the EF-65 hauling 480 tons reached a balancing speed of 74 km per hour D4, while the EF-58 hauling 550 tons reached a balancing speed of 72 km per hour D2. 
The former corresponded to blue trains such as Asakes, while the latter corresponded to express trains with older passenger cars such as Takachiho Express. The EF-65, which struggled with high-speed operations, managed to ascend only 2 km per hour faster than the EF-58 despite hauling trains that were over 10% lighter. At the time, long passenger trains were the norm, so even electric locomotives frequently operated at their maximum hauling capacity. This meant that slight gradients still posed a challenge. However, the development of EMUs drastically changed this situation. Even the pre-war 51 series, with an MT ratio of 1 to 1, demonstrated impressive performance, D9 with 200% passenger capacity and C3 with 100% capacity. Post-war, with the mass production of the 80 series, speeds significantly improved, achieving C9 with 200% capacity and B3 with 100% capacity. The era of new generation EMUs saw further advancements. By utilizing weak field magnetic operations, performance drops at high speeds were mitigated. For example, the 153 series 6M6T formation achieved B8 with 200% passenger capacity, and the 151 series Kodama formation reached A8, exceeding 100 km per hour and demonstrating the prestige of limited express trains. As motor output improved, even express trains experienced significant progress. The 165 series reached A10, surpassing the 100 km per hour milestone, and the low-speed oriented 115 series achieved A3 with a 4M4T formation, comfortably entering the 100 km per hour range, showcasing the capabilities of high-performance motors. The 181 series pushed speeds even further, with a 6M4T formation reaching A28 and an 8M4T formation achieving A33. Notably, EMU sometimes adjusted speed categories depending on operating lines. On direct current sections with significant voltage drops due to substation spacing, calculations were done at 1,350 volts instead of the standard 1,500 volts, resulting in lower speed categories for those sections. In alternating current AC, electrified sections, where the overhead current is less than one-tenth of that indirect current DC, sections, this issue was not as prominent. However, as the number of AC electrified sections and dual current vehicles increased, a new problem arose. As introduced in a separate video, dual current EMUs had their output limited in AC sections due to the transformer capacity constraints, resulting in separate speed categories for AC and DC sections. For example, the 485 series in an 8M4T formation achieved A29 in DC sections but only A20 in AC sections. Similarly, the 583 series with an 8M5T formation managed A26 in DC sections but dropped to A14 in AC sections. The 583 series, being heavier, performed even worse in a 6M6T formation, falling to A18 in DC sections and A11 in AC sections, a rather low value for a limited express EMU. On the other hand, the introduction of the EF-66 locomotive brought significant changes. Initially designed for freight use, the EF-66's immense power was allocated to high-speed operations, transforming the speed categories for freight trains. On the Sanayo main line, for instance, the EF-65 hauled 510 tons of limited express passenger cars at C2, while the EF-66 managed 1,000 tons of limited express freight at C6, a phenomenon where freight trains surpassed passenger trains in speed. During the same period, limited express passenger cars in similar formations were hauled by EF-30 and ED-73 locomotives, achieving G9 and E5 respectively, showing that the EF-65 still maintained some reputation as a large F-type electric locomotive. The issue of performance variation in dual-current locomotives also persisted. For example, the EF-81 hauling a 480-ton limited express passenger train achieved C3 in DC sections but dropped to D7 in AC sections. Finally, the 381 series, often regarded as the pinnacle of JNR's DC Limited Express EMUs, achieved A34 with a 6M3T formation, becoming the highest performing vehicle on conventional rail lines. The Shinkansen Zero series, with its 16M all-motorized high-power configuration, stood apart from all others, reaching a speed category of A96. Meanwhile, how did diesel trains compare? In the early days, when single-engine cars dominated formations, their performance values were not remarkable and comparable to passenger trains hauled by steam locomotives. However, with the introduction of the Kiha 55 series in an all-dual-engine configuration, everything changed. 
The operation timetables for semi-express diesel trains composed of Kiha 55 cars frequently included speed symbols marked with A. However, this value was based on calculations that exceeded the Engine's normal maximum operating RPM. Unless the wheels were minimally worn, this was a speed that should not have been achieved in practice. Perhaps the standards of the time were relatively lenient. At their debut, these diesel trains achieved speed symbols rivaling those of the Kodama Type Limited Express EMUs. However, the subsequent enlargement of train bodies and the addition of air conditioning systems caused diesel trains to rapidly lag behind their electric counterparts. For instance, the Kiha 81, which was developed specifically for limited express services, faced challenges due to power supply capacity constraints. The dining car had to be equipped with a power engine, leaving no space for a traction engine. The configuration, consisting of six two-engine cars, 6M, two single-engine cars, small m, and one trailer car, 1t, had to manage the heavy weight of limited express bodies, a daunting task for the DMH-17 engines. Initially, the speed symbol fell to D9, and only later, with the addition of one more dual-engine car for a 10-car operation, did it manage to reach C3. Such was the struggle faced by early limited express diesel trains. In the case of the 82 series, the dining car was also equipped with two engines, but the basic formation was short, either six or seven cars, two of which had only one engine. As a result, performance improvements were limited. The 7M3 small M formation achieved a speed symbol of C5, while the 9M4 small M formation barely managed C7. This performance was slower than express formations like the mountain route oriented Kiha 58, which maintained B or higher. For an extended period, diesel limited express trains risked being slower than express trains. This issue was resolved with the introduction of the Kiha 181 series. Even in a short 5M1T formation with one trailer car, it achieved A20, while the all-motorized 7M formation reached an impressive A32. These values not only surpassed other DMUs of the time but even outperformed many EMUs. The limited express Tsubasa, with its 11M1T formation, achieved A31. This was the only formation operating on the Tohoku main line that exceeded A30, both in AC and DC sections. While speed category evaluations represent only one dimension of performance, the Kiha 181 series demonstrated its strength in high-speed operations on flat sections, a hallmark of its design. Additionally, the Limited Express Oki, with a 9M1T formation, reached a speed symbol of A29. On the Sanayo main line east of Kurashiki, which was heavily trafficked by Limited Express EMUs, the Oki stood out. Despite operating in DC sections suitable for high-speed flatline operations, the flatline-oriented EMU formations such as 6M5T or 6M6T could not compete. By the time DMUs achieved performance parity with EMUs in terms of speed categories, yet another new high-speed vehicle was set to join the fleet. A prototype formation of gas turbine vehicles, boasting remarkable lightness, was completed, and test runs began on the Hakubi line, which gained attention as an essential connection route for limited express Oki. Surprisingly, the speed symbol was a 31, an unexpectedly low value due to the short train formation, which caused a high proportion of air resistance during high-speed operations. However, when recalculated for a longer formation of approximately 9 cars, the speed symbol was estimated to reach a 40. Despite the anticipation surrounding gas turbine vehicles, they were never put into practical use. Additionally, the engine output of the 181 series was gradually reduced due to operational issues. On Limited Express Yakumo, a 10M1T formation achieved A22 with an equivalent of 470 horsepower, while in Shikoku, a 7M formation managed A28 with an equivalent of 480 horsepower, marking a decline in performance. After Japan National Railway's bankruptcy, both EMUs and DMUs entered a prolonged stagnation period. However, seeds of technological innovation began to emerge and later flourished following JNR's privatization. Consequently, trains achieving speed symbols exceeding A40 began to appear regularly. In this new era, the meaning of speed category diverged from its original concept tied to balancing speed on a 10 per mile gradient. For low-speed vehicles operating on conventional lines, the motive power's output had already surpassed the requirements for such gradients. Instead of balancing speed being limited by tractive effort, upper speed limits were determined by factors such as control equipment frequency constraints or engine maximum RPM restrictions. Through the lens of speed categories, the evolution of train performance has been traced. 
Behind this progression lies the story of railway vehicles that adapted to societal changes, spanning the pre-war years, the post-war era, the peak of Showa's economic prosperity, and the stagnation of the Heisei era.